So the owner of this magnificent 65-foot wooden schooner got a hold of me seeking my opinion about a modification that he was planning to one of his anchors. This is a 172-pound, what I call a heavy Danforth anchor. It's a pivoting fluke design. It is uh, made of cast stainless steel and is quite old. And his complaint with this anchor was that in softer substrates, it just had very low performance. So he provided me with this photograph that shows a piece of plywood. That's the pattern that he was going to use to add roughly half-inch thick stainless steel to the fluke of this anchor. So my first reaction to viewing this photo was, sure, that looks like a logical modification. But then I held back a little bit. Before I responded to the owner, I got to thinking that this anchor was made by the Danforth Company, and they have a lot of experience with anchors. And that maybe there was a good reason they made the fluke shape in the way that they did. Uh, the second thing I thought was that even if this modification is made, it would be nice to get some baseline data uh, before then. So that's just what I did. I suggested that I test this anchor in some soft mud, and here are the initial results. This is my normal soft mud seabed at Scow Bay. We are in 20 feet of water. I've got a 160 foot road attached. Uh, 12 feet of it is chain. And for those that are skeptical of my use of little or no chain on these larger anchors, uh, make no mistake that this really heavy square cross section shank is not lifted from the seabed. The angle of pull is gonna be directly horizontal at these very low holding numbers that you are going to see. Unfortunately, you are not going to see the anchor. Uh, we've got very high turbidity and I've got a fairly long camera tether position, so we're not going to see any of the anchor. But what I can tell you, right now we can see that the anchor, uh, the camera tethers are moving downward in the field of view. We are looking straight down, but the anchor is now moving and we're just simply seeing the float sort of angling back a bit. Now the float or the camera float is oscillating side to side, but this is motion. Boat's moving at about one, maybe one and a half knots, and there's only 145 pounds of thrust being applied here via the boat propeller. Uh, at 100 pounds of thrust, which is what we're seeing here, the, the anchor was stationary. Again, this is a 172 pound anchor, and no, it cannot even hold its own weight. And what we're, gonna, what we're finding is that the anchor's just not setting. It's not about, not about fluke area. Uh, there is just no setting, no penetration whatsoever into the seafloor. Here's a look at what goes on on the top side. Uh, this engine is capable of a bollard pull of 1,325 pounds, but again, for this test, uh, the most I pulled was uh, about 140 pounds, but was moving about a knot and a half steady. And, and uh, again, no indication it was gonna set. At this point, I really don't know what's going on. I'm just thinking maybe the anchor was fouled on a branch or something. Uh, so, of course, I'm gonna retest, and here is try number two. So initially it was the exact same story. The anchor was moving at about a knot and a half at 140 pounds of pull. But then I increased uh, thrust from this point uh, to increase the speed of the anchor and here's what happened. Go up a bit more here, go to 1600, 1.4, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1
Here's the third try for this same test. It noticed that we saw a little bit of the anchor there before things started moving. Uh, the camera tether's a bit shorter this time. That's going to help us with our vision. Uh, unfortunately, the bulk of the anchor is out of the field of view. Uh, the anchor uh, b b behaved very similar to the first two tries in that it did not set at a low speed, uh, but uh, I did increase speed, and, it, and this one, it took five knots to get it to set. Uh, at this point, it's about two knots, and I'm just slowly going faster and faster, and this is about five knots of boat speed. That's what it looks like when your boat is dragging really, really fast. Here's that five knot view from the top side, and the anchor actually did not set until I chopped the power, and at some point during the deceleration of the anchor, the toes were able to engage the seabed at locked in and, and held very high boat thrust, uh, just like that second try. So it was uh, three for three on no setting with low boat speed or, you know, the normal setting procedure, and then the, the other two took some sort of shenanigans with the throttle to get the anchor to set. Now take a look at the crown or the hinge area of the anchor and you'll notice that it does not have mud palms. Here is a more modern Danforth anchor and it does have mud palms. Now the purpose of these flat pieces of metal that are set at that bit of a slope, the purpose is to elevate the crown of the anchor so that the toe or tips of the flukes will present to the seabed at a positive angle or an angle such that they can begin to dig in. What I believe was happening with this heavy Danforth anchor, with the absence of the palms and the extremely heavy construction, caused the crown or the back part of the anchor to settle down into the seabed a little bit, and perhaps the toe or tips of the fluke were pointed upward and never sets. Now, why the anchor would set at a higher speed, I don't know. Perhaps there was a mound of seabed that would collect underneath the anchor, and maybe at some point at a higher speed, the anchor would drive up over that mound, and perhaps on the back side of it, the tips would get the correct orientation. That's just speculation. Of course, we didn't see anything to verify it, but in any event, I thought it would be a good idea to construct a temporary or prototype mud palms and that's just exactly what I did. And here are the results from the from the test of those temporary palms. Okay, we're right back in the soft mud at Scow Bay at the same 8 to 1 scope. In the lower left-hand part of the screen, you can see the plywood temporary mud palm. And as I bring up the power incrementally, that palm will disappear right away. And yeah, the anchor sets perfectly on this try, just, uh, just as it should have all the time. Uh, I'll jump ahead here to the tail end of this straight line pull. It's at 1,325 pounds, and uh, there's just really nothing to see all through this uh, ramp up. There was uh, very little or no motion. Here's the anchor on retrieval. It wasn't terribly fouled. Uh, again, that's just what we want to see. Here's uh, take two for that uh, temporary mud palm test in the soft mud, and it was exactly the same result. It said immediately, held the full boat thrust, no problem. set for the palm equipped heavy Danforth. Well, I think there's little doubt that the palms uh, really improved the anchor in the soft mud, but what about other seabeds? Uh, this is my normal sandy mud seabed. Now, we get much better pictures here, and I can use the winch more effectively in this location. The owner of the anchor did indicate that the anchor sets and works fine in more firm substrates, but I just wanted to get a, get a look and see how it does. I uh, also want to make sure that the mud palms aren't inhibiting the anchor in some way. And this is what I found out. We saw that the anchor did set uh, just nicely. We saw the, the articulating motion happen kind of in slow motion there as the, uh, the throat angle opened up. Anchor has a bit of a list, and in the lower left there we see the digital readout. That is the pounds of pull on the anchor in real time. I've jumped ahead just a little bit. We're now up into the mid-teens pulling power. Uh, the winch is just slowly pulling in on this anchor, and it peaks right around here, about 2,000. And then the anchor immediately has a pop-out type release, and it rolls over directly onto its side. The anchor has rolled 90 degrees 
uh, one of the stocks is now penetrated, I believe, down into the seabed, probably a foot or so. Uh, there is a ball of mud wedged into the flukes and the stock, and the anchor is very, very stable for a considerable distance. It was uh, 15 or 20 feet. Now I've jumped ahead here. The anchor continued that roll. It continued to roll through 180 degrees, and now it's it's back upright, if you will, um, if not uh, upside down from its uh, initial landing point. Uh, but And then it resets, so that's good. Uh, keep in mind, all this is completely straight line pulling. I'm pulling against a dead mad anchor, and there's absolutely no side-to-side -side boat motion whatsoever. So it did reset nicely, and now I've skipped ahead again and uh, had another peak. This was higher. Last one was 2,000. This one uh, touches 2,800. It just happened there. I apologize for that flickering readout. Uh, and, and then just immediately after the peak, uh, another pop-out type release. And once again, the anchor is on its side. This time it was hopeless. I, I dragged it for many dozens of feet and no reset and no change. Just stayed exactly 90 degrees. One of the stocks dug down into the seabed. And again, no reset. So after conducting these tests and putting together these, these video clips, I'll give my opinion to the owner regarding his proposal to modify this anchor. In my mind, he's got four choices. First choice would be to do nothing and just keep using the anchor and accept its flaws. And it's not just the soft mud initial setting. Uh, the owner described a time when he was in the tropics. The anchor would not set in a very, very hard sand seabed. He actually had to jump overboard, swim down to the anchor, grab hold of the stocks and lift the crown of the anchor and physically help and force the toes into that seabed. And, well, this works for him. And I'll mention that this is a super seaman. This man has sailed all over the world, and he, he absolutely knows what he is doing. And make no mistake, the reason his boat did not go on the rocks is not because of his anchor gear. It's because he is a proper sailor. His next option would be to continue on with his proposal to expand the size of the flukes, but I don't think that's going to help his soft mud setting issue at all. In fact, it might make it worse. It might also make the clogging issue worse in that sandy mud seabed. And keep in mind, uh, fluke area in that position of that plywood is nearer to the surface of the substrate, and uh, the, the higher up you go in the substrate, the less holding power it has. So... It, it may not really add a whole lot of holding power, even in the best case scenario. His next option would be to go ahead with my idea to add the mud palms. I think there is no question that it will help and basically solve his soft mud setting problem. It's possible, though, that it'll make the clogging and the pop-out problem in the sandy mud it could make that worse. So it's Probably be a good idea to retest the anchor without the mud palms in the sandy mud. Which brings us to the fourth and, in my opinion, best decision as to what to do with that heavy Danforth anchor. I think you should take it home, plant it in a blob of concrete upright down at the end of his driveway, and attach his mailbox to it. I apologize to the people who are fans of those kinds of anchors, but no, they are just almost entirely obsolete at this point. In my view, this includes all the old school pivoting fluke heavy anchors, the uh, what I call heavy Danforce, stockless, navy, even the slightly more modern four fjord anchors. Uh, they're all, uh, in my view, just obsolete. Uh, there's The only occasions where you really have to have them is if you're forced to use a side hose pipe to stow the anchor. And then the other example would be, well, apparently the commercial fishermen around here really feel they need those four fjords outside on the exposed, rocky Alaska coast. So my recommendation is to install a proper bow roller on perhaps the port side of the bowsprit. Looks like the windlass will also need to be modified with a, uh, a second wildcat on the port side. But uh, no, a modern anchor there would be great. Uh, the crew already carries a large Bruce copy. It is a claw, and uh, unfortunately they don't have a good place to stow it. So it lives upside down on the port bulwark, and it has to be handled via a halyard, which is anything but convenient. Now, the folks that own this beautiful vessel have had it in their family for 30 years or so. 
and they may be reluctant to make those kinds of changes, and it no doubt will negatively affect the aesthetics. So if they choose not to do that and stick with their Danforth, uh, I'd say, sure, do the mud palm modification first and then uh, maybe explore expanding the size of the flukes. Okay, that's all I got for this heavy Danforth episode. Stay tuned. Uh, Next up will be a full test of a 55-pound Mantis M1 anchor. As always, I sure appreciate the people who have donated. It does help offset some of the costs of these tests and if you would like to join them uh, i've got links to patreon and paypal in the description below as always anchor safely so long